Bonjour everyone and welcome to my channel The Waves of Your Soul. My name is Maureen, I'm a French tarot reader and today I wanted to share with you my favorites for the month of May 2021. We're gonna be talking about books, tarot decks, oracle decks. I just wanted to do a little show and tell. I love watching those kind of videos from tarot card lovers. The aim here is really not to tell you what to buy but really to give you a little bit of insight into what was helpful and useful for me this month so that maybe you can uh, have a new perspective on a deck you already have or if you're on the lookout for a new deck or a new book to expand on a certain subject it might give you ideas or if you just want to grab a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and just chill with me then I'm so grateful for you to letting me spend time with you like this. So the month of May was actually a little bit of a tricky one for me. Um, I've been very open on my other videos about the fact that I navigate through chronic illness and the month of May was a month where um, I had a huge flare up in my health journey. So I didn't really get to do very much. I didn't get to do a lot of filming and you know, I had a lot of ideas for my future readings. I wanted to, for my YouTube channel, I wanted to get through quite a few books and I have quite a lot <laughs> on my to-do list in general in terms of day to day. And uh, my health decided otherwise and it's okay, you know, I am learning to ride the wave and to not go against the current. And so the month of May was very difficult for me in the sense that I didn't have a lot of energy, I was in a lot of pain for most of the months. So that very much affected my practice, my spiritual practice and I wanted to share that with you because I know that you know there's quite a lot of us out there um, who have chronic pain or go through um, repetitive health issues when your body, when your health get affected, um, your spirituality practice shifts because you don't have the energy and mental space to do as much. Maybe, for example, for me, I had this whole plan for the month of May that I was going to start to uh, go deeper into my Marseille study and I got really sick, like I said, and I was stuck in bed and I was like, hell no, I don't have the space and the mental space to try and learn something new right now when I'm just literally on survival mode trying to get by day by day. So that kind of very much is um, seen in the, the decks and stuff I want to show you this month because I was in a headspace where I just needed to kind of go back to basics or have supporting decks choose carefully what decks i was using that they would not be triggering in any cha shape or form um, and trying to find decks that would be very compassionate and very in a you know this is not the month i was going to do shadow work for example <laughs> because it's just like you know it was just not going to happen i had to find stuff that was going to help support me nourish me whilst i was navigating through this particular crisis so i'm going to start with books i haven't read many books this month because like i said i didn't really have the headspace or the energy but there's a, a three that i wanted to mention that i have very much enjoyed the first one is um, an astrology book. I am slowly but surely starting to learn a little bit more about astrology. I'm not giving myself any kind of timeline on how much I need to learn by when. This book was given by my lovely friend Tanya and it is Your Zodiac Soul by John Wadsworth. This particular edition is by Orion Spring um, and so I have absolutely very much enjoyed this book. Um, the way that the book is set up is that you take some kind of a journey through each of the 12 signs. So this book is only about the zodiac sign from Aries to um, Pisces and for each of the signs you get um, an explanation around everything that makes this sign what it is. So for at the beginning you'll have symbols 
um, mantras, medicine, shadow energy, and then each of the signs are divided into specific themes. So for example, for Aries, I'm an Aries, so I'm gonna go with this one. We have some themes, so for example, leaping into action, the passion of spring, about Mars, which is our ruling planet, about being uh, headstrong, which, you know, <laughs> is a quality that all of us Aries share. Um, and there's also a talk about what happens when you know shadow Aries energy? If you have too much Aries in your chart, in your chart, if you don't have enough, and um, there's like if there's links to mythology, there's links to poems, there's links to history, and every time at the end of each sign, you also have journaling questions and activities, and this is the same for every single one of the signs. And as you can see, I have marked this book to death. There is so much good information in this book. What I love the most most about this book is the bibliography. It is insanely good. Literally, I'd say like a good third of the books referenced in this are actually amazing and I've already purchased some and I'm gonna... I've started reading a couple that I've got um, but this bibliography is literally so so good and for me I very value how people get their sources. It's very important for me to see a good bibliography for me a good bibliography and a good table of contents it might seem stupid but it's already a good sign that i can have uh, i'm going to enjoy this read because it gives me nuggets of gold that i can then follow right like following the breadcrumbs so i've got so many great uh, references around goddess work around more different astrology book it talks about mythology it talks about um, a lot of it philosophy um, psychology this book is very very well written it's super interesting and in terms of learning what each of the signs stands for what the symbols are as well as understanding the human psyche behind each of the sign and how each sign affects us all of us regardless of what our sun sign is i have found this to be so interesting and one of the best astrology books that i've read so far okay next up um, we have the Dear Universe by Sarah Proud, 200 mini meditation for instance manifestation. This one is literally, um, it's not a book that you would read cover to cover, but each page is a different uh, emotion. The first half of the book is more, I would say, shadow emotion. So you have terrified, tired, selfish, misunderstood, indifferent, etc. And the second half of the book is more light emotions, so honest, helpful, divine, uh, inquisitive, intuitive, inspired, selfless. And so for each of the page, if each of the emotion, you have a little bit about how the author reflects on that emotion compared to her personal experience. And what is the very much gold nugget of this book is at the end, you have a little bit of a a mini meditation so for me they say mini meditation to me this is full on uh, some kind of like uh, incantation or mantra or a ritual or a prayer you know because it is very powerful every single one starts with your universe it will give you the prayer or mantra and then it will always finish by so be it so it is and how I've, I've had this book for a while let's say almost a year maybe even more but this one, it was very nourishing to me this month because, like I said, I was navigating a lot of emotion, I was in a lot of pain, so that brings a lot of like, you know, my nervous system was on high alert. I was very much into my flight or fight kind of mode, survival mode, and to help me ground myself and reconnect to my spiritual practice, um, I just use this book a lot for bibliomancy, so at the end of each night, I would literally just randomly flick through and uh, end up on a page and that would be <laughs> the page I would need that day so in this case peaceful and I would just read that mantra three times before going to bed I don't know power of three I feel like there's something very powerful about repeating something three times and that would be like my mini meditation mini intention for the day or for the you know the next day or just to end the day on a good note and this book it seems unassuming but it's very powerful and uh, i absolutely love it i have done i've used it i think once on my channel for a reading i'm gonna have to reintroduce it in my readings for like finishing readings i think it would be a great one but honestly 
if you need some kind of like self-love compassionate prompt to help you when you're navigating through shit it's a great one and i like i said i've been using it like randomly pulling a, a, an emotion and reading but you can also actually you know find a meditation that suits how you're feeling like if you know that you're feeling for example suffocated right now which let's be honest with the current state of affairs i feel like a lot of people are then you could go to the suffocated page and read the mantra that's going to help you deal with that so this is also a great one for shadow work i think uh, and you know it doesn't veer away from difficult topics which i appreciate it is not a love and light kind of de book which i really appreciate i like that there's shadow and light for me it's very important so this is dear universe by sarah pratt i absolutely love it very powerful if for all of my french readers or french speaking people out there there is a tarot book that i've been going through which is called tarot de l'unité by ellen huck and the uh, uh, illustrator is ag dirty stein um this is a book around uh, the major arcana cards of the tarot. It, it covers mostly Marseille arcanas, um, which, but you know, it doesn't specifically only use Marseille references. So for any of my RWS lovers out there, it's still interesting. It's more so about the archetypes of the major arcana card than the actual, you know, history of the card. And this is very much around the idea of alchemy and joining the feminine energy with the masculine energy and talking about um, each card in a way that I have not seen before. So I absolutely love this deck, It is this book, sorry. It is so interesting. It's very deep, again, great bibliography. I mean, look at, like mine is kind of like falling apart because I've been reading it in bed and going over and over. So for each of the major arcana card, you get an understanding of the symbolism you'll get always its references to alchemy process so and also if you don't know what alchemy is it does give you at the beginning a little bit of a history lesson and philosophical lesson and psychological lesson on alchemy then it always links the tarot card to an archetype so in this case the lover card is linked to don juan you know don juan i don't know how you say in english but don juan you know that courtesan kind of archetype and then it will what what i've really appreciated is that for every single card it also links it to an essential oil so talking about olfactotherapy aromatherapy linking a smell to a tarot arcana card i had never seen before and i really am someone who resonates with um smells I guess it's because of my Taurus moon. It's something I've always resonated very much. Like I'm very sensitive to smells. It's also something I'm even more sensitive when I'm in a lot of pain. Smells can really like get emphasized for me. And so I found that very interesting to link a tarot card with a smell, with an essential oil. So for example, for the lovers, it's Ylang Ylang, which I don't know if you know Ylang Ylang, but it does very much smell of luscious love, passion everything the lovers is it always links a tarot card with a back flower as well which i don't know anything about so i won't talk about that and then it also links it to one or a few chakras and always it will give you key words and um around shadow and light of the card so this book is not about how you read tarot it is not about how you do a reading or even trying to understand if you pull a lover's card what it means it's about digging below the surface at what all the hidden meaning archetypes and correspondences you can have behind uh, the tarot cards especially on a alchemy kind of focus okay let's move on to oracle decks as i know most of you must be here for decks which let's be real i are also my favorite parts of watching into any favorites video so the first deck i wanted to share actually comes with another one of my favorites from this month which are um, the lovely pouches my friend jen made for my birthday which was at the end of march um she made me a lot of very cute pouches with tropical kind of uh, fabric and also some tarot cloth and everything and I have been absolutely loving them so much 
obviously I love anything tropical, me living currently on a tropical island and having grown on a tropical island. So I have really appreciated this gift and I wanted to give a shout out to Jen for this lovely, um, those lovely pouches. And inside this one lives a recent, I'd say I've had this deck for now. Uh, well, I got it maybe, yeah, I'd say a month ago. And it is called the, uh, there is always light oracle this is an oracle by uh, the artist hand me that pencil so if you go on etsy it's an indie deck i'll put all the links in the description box below of course indie deck that you can get on etsy um, and um, it is a very interesting oracle deck so it's called there is always light and it's got a very interesting structure so as you can see it comes with like three parts the first part is just a you get a spread and you get a quick reference because the creator has created symbols on each of the card that corresponds to a certain theme um, you get a card to kind of reference that you also get for each of those themes so for example here let's say everything with this sign is the sun so you also get for each of the symbols another card for each that will give you more keyword relating to that. So for the sun, every, every card with the symbol sun, you would have those keywords related to help you interpret the cards. But you get one. So we have the sun, we have unlock, forest, growth, cut, moon, heart, gate, etc. And those are almost like archetypes. So you could include those into your reading or you could put them separately and almost like think, okay, what is the theme of the reading I need to do today? You, and as you know, you draw, mix them and then it grows. Okay, so the reading I need to do today is around those theme. And then you use the actual illustrated card if you wanted to. So, you know, there's different ways you can use that. You do you. What I appreciate is that the backs are slightly different from uh, the illustrated card so it's easier to you know to separate if you want so that's great and then the actual main of the deck main bit of the deck is illustrated so the main part of the deck it is illustrated and for each card you will get a number you get symbols so I've, I've, I've talked about them before this is like you get one here and one here and of course they correspond to the symbols we talked about earlier and for each card you also get a keyword and of course because this deck is called there is always light each of the card comes with a very interesting placement of light now this deck is so powerful and i have absolutely loved using it it has a more fantasy field feel you have mermaids unicorns forests kind of as you can see almost like a storybook feel i love the fact that um, the artist is using um you know for example here we have what looks like a more male presenting body with a made up face which i love that contrast that combination is something i really appreciate not something you see often in oracle decks or i've never actually seen it that ever in an oracle deck so i re really appreciate that it comes with a good balance of keywords between light and shadow so here we have the hunter here we have gather and as you can see always always there's an interesting use of light because this deck is called there is always light um it's a beautiful kind of fantasy feel deck and honestly even if you don't the the way that she has worked the symbols is very intuitive and very interesting and very easy to pick up but if you don't want to use any of that those extra cards and you just want to use a deck for what it is with the keyword the imagery with that regardless of the symbol you totally can uh, look how magical this one is this still so this is an indie artist. She creates deck in, from what I understood, New Zealand. And so the, the, the decks are sent without boxes. 
So they are just shrink wrapped and she puts them in padded envelopes so that you have the least minimum weight possible. One, so that it's cheaper to send because actually they are very affordable for indie decks. Also so that it's more ecologically friendly and then I love that. I love the fact that it's like minimum, you just get the cards and then you get a PDF that you can download on her website. So you know, you still have guidebooks if you want. She gives you coloring books if you subscribe to her newsletters. She does so much work that you can get honestly uh, for like free and also with decks that you buy. It's very, I think she gives a lot to her, uh, her um, clients like it's just a great artist um, and I honestly don't really care that I don't get a box with this deck because I just put them in pouches and you know I, um, the fact that she lived in New Zealand she explains that the decks might take ages to come but because I don't actually live that far away from New Zealand I mean I'm far but I'm still in the same part of the uh, globe like it's still the southern hemisphere just like me it took like two weeks for me to come so it was super quick maybe even 10 days so I absolutely love this one and I wanted to talk about it because I never see anyone really mention that deck before and honestly it's just great okay next up I have a mass market deck that has been out for years I'm sure many of you know this one it is Le Voyageur Sacré it is a French version by Denis Lynn I think in English it is called The Sacred Traveler by Denis Lynn you can find it in English mass market you can find it in French mass market it has been out like I said for a long time and it kind of slipped under my radar and I got it around yeah I got it this month month of May uh, honestly it was a hashtag trying to make me feel myself better <laughs> purchase which uh, you know I'm sure a lot of you can relate there's just time when you just you know retail therapy trying to to cope with the shit storm that's hit you and you just try and find a nice deck to help you feel better <laughs> not that I try and encourage uh, spending money to like retail therapy etc but sometimes it helps okay especially this one surprised me I thought it was gonna be kind of uh, cheesy and a bit too you know meh but actually it's really good so Denise Lynn you might know her from the sacred destiny oracle I've mentioned this deck many many times it's one of my favorite oracle decks and it's actually what brought me to this particular one because I thought well hey if she's done a great one with my sacred destiny she, you know she might have done a really good one with this one it has almost like a storybook feel to it with the imagery you get a really good guidebook with for each card um, you know a message of signification of the card and what the sacred traveler wants to tell you you get a couple of spread and you know I like how Denise Lynn writes I think it's easy to understand straight to the point not 50 pages which for the month of May was great for me what I appreciate about this deck is two things the first thing is it's direct like you know if you just want to take a card you just can pick a card and you get all the information you need here so for example here it says um, getting over obstacles nothing can resist you sometimes this is all you need right you need a, a oracle card that you don't have to read the guidebook for especially when you're kind of like what I was going through which was you know feeling a bit overwhelmed you kind of can need that kind of directness sometimes so I appreciate that I also appreciate the very storybook soft um, drawing it feels like a storybook from when I was a kid it has you know a very magical feel but what I also appreciate about this deck which I didn't expect is that it does have some light and shadow cards so for example here it says the thunder uh, thunder far away and it uh, talks about clarify clarifying things and so there's definitely cards that are not so love light abundance and you know I appreciate that um, we have here travel light simplify your life so everything is in the sense of a sacred journey sacred traveler so there's a sense of adventure going throughout the deck which I really appreciate especially when I was stuck in bed I appreciate being able to travel through this deck and I feel like with many of us um, not being able to really go travel anywhere because of the pandemic this one is a nice way to escape it's a nice like you know it has a very lovely feel I think and you know like I said there's definitely cards that are not so 
love and light so we have here um, dead end think and reroute your energy so this is a great little deck um, finally to round up my favorite oracle decks of the month of may i have a french deck you know my videos would not be complete if i wasn't wrapping the french decks out there <laughs> i'm a friend i'm you know a french reader so of course i'm always out there trying to find uh, decks that have been made by french artists or french authors and i'm trying to show my channel always ones that i think can be used regardless of whether you speak french or not so this is a mass market deck you can find it i'm sure on any kind of you know mass market website like amazon french or something like that it is called l'oracle des kami et yokai by caroline duban and lawrence rasson right rasson rasson <laughs> depending on what accent you want i can butcher it in many languages <laughs> and it is a japanese inspired japanese mythology inspired oracle deck so comes with a very great guidebook the production quality of this is very nice for each of the card you get the name of that um, japanese so it talks about japanese divinity which are called kami or it talks about Japanese um, kind of creatures, monsters, uh, spirits, which are called yokai. So, you know, this is a mix, but it's, of course, Japanese mythology inspired. And honestly, I don't know anything about Japanese mythology. So this was for me a way to kind of learn a little bit more. Like I said, for each card, you get uh, the name, you get the Japanese spelling, you get a story of who that divinity or spirit is and then you get the definition of the, um, the the meaning of that card in terms of like divinity or or personal development so it comes with a little pouch and like i said i didn't know very much about ja well actually i didn't know shit let's be real <laughs> about japanese mythology but uh, I thought this was a good opportunity to learn. I'm always really interested to learn as much as possible, especially around mythology. I love learning more. Uh, these are the backs. Look at the shape already of this. Isn't it super cool? I don't have many decks that are this shape, but I absolutely love it. The cardstock is matte, it's beautiful. And this is one of the few decks that I bought without seeing images. Normally I always do my research. I'm always like, you know, watching other readers videos around what deck the deck looks like, etc. Cause I don't like spending my money on something that won't resonate with me. This one was a pure blind buy. I just let my intuition do the talking and I'm so happy I did. So the drawings of this deck are absolutely outstanding i think the artist is so talented for each card you get the japanese uh, spelling and you get the name either of that spirit or of that divinity why do i think that even a non-french speaking person could use it well one first of all if you are japanese or you have japanese uh, descend uh, like you know in your family or something like that then I think you would potentially love that if you're passionate of Japanese culture I think you would love this deck and even if you don't speak French because you have the name of the um, so here for example we have Izanami who is uh, the goddess of um, death and many other things of course because you have the name of the divinity or the spirit, you can just use the cards and then do your own research and almost um, add your own interpretation to the cards if you wanted to, or you could use a guidebook with Google Translate. But you know, there's no actual keywords in terms of meaning to the card. It's just the name of that spirit or of that divinity. So I think it gives you total freedom to almost use this deck to do what you want. You could even cut the bottom if you want it because the imagery is so powerful. If you really wanted to, you could cut the bottom off and just use it for intuitive pulls. Look at this. I love this one. Uh, what I love about this deck is, well, one, the production quality. Like I said, gorgeous matte cardstock, gorgeous book. Love the shape of the card. I absolutely love the artistry like the images beautiful um it's definitely got some more powerful cards in terms of light and shadow look at that you know this is not good news right you know when you pick that it's like oof okay come to my nightmares <laughs> 
but I like it at the same time. I don't like oracle decks that are always love and light. Um, and I also very much appreciate the fact that in the guidebook, it also gives you a little um, pronunciation course. So it tells you how to pronounce uh, syllables in Japanese because I think if we're gonna be studying anything that is from a culture that is not ours the least we can do is learn how to pronounce those entities those beings those energies those spirits those divinities so I very much appreciate that but look at this I'm just showing you almost every card because I just love it so much every reading I've done it's spot on that's it that's the saying I'm looking for it's super detailed even it's freakishly accurate this deck in terms of reading it for me it as this is a card i got a lot baku which at first i first time i pulled the card i thought oh shit this doesn't look very good like it looks like a monster or something but actually it's this spirit is all about eating people's nightmares and disease and illnesses and it's about not letting appearances trick you not judging a book by its cover just because the spirit looks threatening doesn't mean it's a bad one and i think that's a very great message so i will leave you on that one i think uh, this deck is fantastic i'll show you the name of it again in case you're interested l'oracle des kami et yokai okay let's move on to tarot decks so for those of you who watched my last favorite video you will have seen this deck already the fortune queen's tarot a Drag Race Tarot by Juanjo Cristiani, who is and at enjoy.mycake on Instagram. This is a, a RuPaul's Drag Race inspired tarot deck. I love RuPaul's Drag Race and even though I over know I've already shown it in my last favorites, I still really enjoyed it using it in the month of May. So I wanted to show it again because honestly this deck is everything. I love uh, the big size, I love the pink gold edge, the rose gold, sorry, um, kind of edging and it's a RWS inspired deck, so very much like kind of Rider Waite Smith inspired but of course with everything to do with RuPaul's Drag Race, all the drag queens, all the iconic moments, this deck is tens 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 across the board for me and i've really enjoyed using it this month still i think it's there's something very quirky about this deck that means that even the more dire cards like this tower card is still given in with a very uh, don't take yourself too seriously girl kind of vibe look there's like aja literally jumping to do some kind of shablam out of the tower i love it <laughs> So, you know, on each of the cards you'll see a famous drag queen. So, for example, for the moon we have Valentina, for the strengths we have uh, Evie Oddly. And this deck is very, just so much fun. Um, you know, Trixie Mattel is a chariot. You can definitely read it even if you don't know anything about RuPaul's Drag Race because it's a RWS clone. But if you are a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, then there's so much extra layer to this deck that make it really fun. I think um, this deck is just, it brought a touch of humor and of lightheartedness that I really needed this month. I find personally when I'm going through personal crisis that it helps to not take myself too seriously. I don't know if everyone will agree, but it's like for me, it's a true medicine in humor, in laughing, in taking things lighter, in just having a laugh and um, seeing things from a more light-hearted side and this deck is everything that in that sense <laughs> look at the hermit little miss pound cake so i just adore this deck so much i don't think it's gonna come off my favorites anytime soon it's an indie deck you can get it straight on the artist website i think i'll put the link below and i think he is creating a volume two with more drag queens which you know I'm gonna have to get because I'm obsessed. Also, is anyone watching RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under? I wanna know who are your favorites because that's just airing at the moment and I've been really enjoying that. Okay, moving on to my second tarot deck, favorite of the month. Um, I got this one in April, I think, and it is a Neo Tarot, which is a mass market deck. It comes in the most ridiculous box, not this one. Uh, that you will have ever seen because and I actually threw it away because it pissed me off so much so I can't show you the full box but it comes in a box where the guidebook is stuck to the cover of the box so you literally have to rip the guidebook off and then within that box you also get this stuck box as well 
that how many times can I say box in one sentence, you know? <laughs> so the box is shite, let's be real, but I ripped my guidebook off, which is somewhere, I don't even know where I've put the guidebook, and it's a good guidebook to be honest. Um, and I threw away the big box because it was doing my heading. But the deck is good, it's mass market, I think it's pretty affordable, and I really enjoyed it. I've edged mine in blue. So like I said, this is a mass market deck. It is called the Neo Tarot and it is very geometrical, minimalistic kind of drawing. But um, what thing that drew me to this deck, first of all, is the colors. I love all the pinks, oranges. It's got a few palm trees. It's got a lot of very interesting color combination. So that already in itself is something I really appreciate. Another thing I really appreciate is that I don't have many decks that are in this style of more minimalist kind of, um, I don't, I don't know what the term is, but you know what I mean? It's not got a full ton of detail. It's like, so I've got the French version, but like I said, you can get it in English and other languages. So this is the Queen of Wands and you know, it's just very, like you get the sun, you get daisies, you get the wand and you get the queen. And it's like, don't have to beat around the bush. There's not a ton of esoteric symbolism in here. It's very straight to the point and Considering, like I said, that I was in a headspace where I needed, like, it was almost like less is more and I was just feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, when I wanted to use tarot, it was very helpful for me to have something that was quite pared down. So I very much enjoyed this one this month. Um, I very appreciate about this deck the fact that it's uh, very gender neutral. So a lot of the figures are... Um, you can't, you know, you can't really say what genders they are and I think that's very interesting and important for nowadays so that more people can connect with the deck. So for my channel I thought it would be very good, you know, um, for depending what people want to see, it could be a good option for reading for others but also for myself I found it a great reader straight to the point. What I appreciate also about this deck is that there are some more fuller figures like you know not everyone is like super skinny super model kind of vibe which I also really appreciate um, and each of the card in the guidebook comes with a self-care ritual or self-care kind of um, yeah, I guess like a self-care ritual, which is really great and it gives you another layer to the deck. So overall, I really enjoy this one. I think if you are a beginner, definitely you could use it because um, you still, it's very much like RWS inspired, but it doesn't overwhelm you with a lot of the esoteric symbolism, which if that's not your thing and you want something more modern, um, then you would really enjoy. Next up we have the Bright Future Tarot by Saskia Lee Psychic. This is an indie deck you can find on Etsy. I think she's UK based. My friend Gemma got this for me for my birthday, which I am so grateful for. As soon as I saw that it existed, I really wanted this deck. So thank you so much Gemma. I absolutely love it. Um, it like I said, it's an indie deck. You can find it on Etsy. It comes in many different options from what I've seen. I think you can get different guidebooks with it. I think you can get different versions with keyword, without keyword on the card. You can get a uh, trading class. This artist does a lot. Um, I have the tarot deck that my friend picked for me with no keywords and I am so grateful because <laughs> she knows me well. I didn't even tell her, I didn't want keywords or anything. She just knew I wanted the deck, got it for my birthday and uh, I'm so grateful that she picked this version because it's perfect for me. But honestly, I've seen the keywords version and the keywords are not overly um, intrusive, which I appreciate. Uh, but I prefer, that's just personal, right? Like some people like keywords, some people don't. I prefer without. So what I love about this deck is, first of all, the art. I think it's so colorful. It's so um, very lively. And it definitely draws inspiration from our day-to-day -day life. So, you know, we have for the sun, this kind of holiday vibe. The lovers is gorgeous, one of my favorite cards. So this deck is very... Um, you know, it's very our day-to-day -day life and I like that. It's grounded, it talks about things that we can recognize, daily life events that we can recognize. It is diverse in terms of ethnicity and age. I think it 
is a very interesting reader. There's honestly not many cards I don't like in this deck. I love this magician. There's not, it's mostly people in this deck. I think there's a couple of animals, the magician being one of them. There's a little bit of an influence on fantasy, for example, with a six of wands and Pegasus, but mostly I would say it is quite rooted in modern day, like the Queen of Swords is this like badass model, which I love. Um, and just, I really like the art. I love the court card, especially in this deck. I think they're very easy to read. Mostly I would say it is definitely RWS inspired, but some of the depictions very much veer away from it. And I like that. I like seeing how people interpret the card differently. So Temperance is like a bartender making a cocktails. Yes, I'm here for that. Um, Queen of Wands is like, she looks like Rihanna. The Hermit card is depicted with this like do not disturb kind of thing, sign, you know, that you get in hotels. I love that. This is a world card with they have renamed it as a universe, which I still appreciate. You know, it's got the chakras, it's got that circle with Ouroboros where you used to see. You still have the different star signs, so I still can vibe with this deck. You know, the chariot is this like roller roller derby, I think you call that. I really love it. So overall this deck is super colorful, it's very easy reader. I think it's like everyone can see themselves in this deck in some form or another. It shows most people or it shows, you know, look at this six of cups. It's like someone looking inside a dollhouse, like when we were chi children and we would have little dollhouses, uh, but you're inside the dollhouse. How interesting inside for the six of cups. It's all, I feel like it's almost someone looking at my inner child. Um, I don't know. It's just very interesting. So some of the cards are very unique. They depict things in a way that I have never seen before. Let me try to find some of my favorite ones. The Judgment one, for example, is like, there's a lot going on there, right? It's like, is this the Akashic Records? Is this some kind of the way that the artist interpret where we go to be resurrected? Is this just a theater? What is going on? Is this Apollo? I don't know. It's just like, you know, it leaves a lot for interpretation. I like it. One of the cards I will say that is not my favorite is the tower, which is repeated by a time cover of the Twin Tower. I feel like this imagery is just a bit overused by now. You know, it's like, come on, we can think of another way to depict the tower. And I know a lot of people have issues with the depiction of the Twin Towers as the tower archetype, which of course I can appreciate. But I think that the artist has, since publishing the deck, made available a few cards um, that she's redrawn of some of the cards that people, I don't know if it's because she got feedback from people, but I know the tower card for sure. You can now buy a different version of the card as well as other cards of the deck where they're just complete different interpretation. You can get that on our Etsy shop. I haven't honestly had a chance to have a look yet, but I thought I would point that out in case you think that particular card is stopping you from getting the deck, you can now get another one. Oh, here we go. Look at this devil card, one of my favorite ones. I love that so much. Do not press. And that little devil horn, like, come on, do it. I think it's very clever. So yeah, definitely been a strong favorite of mine. I'll mention this very quickly, but I finally got my hands on the Centennial edition of the RWS. This is a borderless edition. We've all seen this deck a million and a thousand times, but um, my only copy of the RWS was the very first copy I got when I started Tarot, and it is like that disgusting version where all the lines are blurry, so I really wanted to get the Centennial version, and you can get the Centennial version borderless which i'm so here for so the colors are a lot more muted um it's got almost like a vintage filter all over it and i've only got it like i don't know i received it about a week ago but i've been really enjoying it finally last but not least for my last favorite we have the shimmering veil tarot by Sila conway oh this deck this deck is everything i think Sila has just released an oracle deck um, I've seen some people make videos of it. I don't remember the name of it, but if you go on her website, you can have a look. Um, but this particular tarot deck has been everything to me this month. 
it is very cosmic here are the backs and i have edged mine in silver but because i had the first version but the version that she said now comes with holographic edges anyway and this deck feels very cosmic very channeled very much carries its name so well and it's been a real lifeline for me this month because um because of, I honestly, I didn't want to be doing a ton of tarot readings for myself this month compared to usually when I read for myself very regularly. And when I did, I either wanted something fun, like with a drag race tarot, or something quite pared down with a neo tarot, or I wanted to have a conversation with my guide where I could have support, where I could find compassion, where I could find kindness, where I could find love. And where I could really sustain my spirituality even when I felt like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so this deck is all of these for me. This deck is what allows me to have full-on conversation with my guides, with the universe in general. Because it's so channeled, you can just let your intuition do the talking. And I really appreciate that. It's just raw. And I really appreciate that. Um... I think this deck is very healing, very gentle and very powerful. It's in my top 5 favorite decks of all time and I think it's gonna sit there for a long time. Like I don't see it ever being replaced because it's so unique and it brings something very unique to my tarot library. And especially when I'm having a downtime or I'm going through some kind of difficult moment. I feel like this deck meets me where I am. To me, it looks like the tree in Pocahontas. And if I'm the only one seeing it, <laughs> I need to know. Or am I the only one who thinks that the Hierophant in the Shimmering Veil vale looks like the tree spirit in Pocahontas? Come on. That is so... The spirit, the tree spirit, whatever, Willow, whatever the name of that character is. It's her, right? that's what I see anyway which makes me love it even more <laughs> these are all my favorites for the month of May uh, thank you so so much if you've made it this far I super appreciate it if you've made it this far leave me a little star emoji in the comments down below it will let me know that you've watched it all the way to now and I will really really appreciate it and um, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it as it really helps my channel to grow I'm super grateful for everyone joining i think i'm now over 500 subscribers which i can't believe i'm literally like ah you know it's crazy to me so thank you thank you thank you for everyone watching it's amazing and all the reading all your comments and everything even when i was going through my difficult times this month it really meant the world to me so i'm so grateful for everyone who takes the time to leave in your little comment or subscribing i really am so grateful for you all and until my next video, I'm sending you so much good vibes, take care of yourself and keep navigating the waves of your soul. Bye!